In this video, I'm going to talk about how you should document and organize your engineering work experience when applying for the PE exam. Yes, to get accepted to take the PE exam, you must detail your engineering experience in a very particular way, and if you do it the right way, it will greatly increase your chances of being accepted to sit for the Principles and Practice of Engineering, or the PE exam. Before I jump into today's topic, let me remind you that most successful engineers will tell you that getting their PE license was the biggest career growth driver that they've experienced, whether it was due to a promotion, salary increase, or just more exciting projects to work on. You want to get your PE license. However, preparing for the PE exam can be a real challenge, but through this and other videos on this channel, you will learn everything you need to know about the licensing process, including PE exam preparation. So please be sure to subscribe to my channel here as my weekly videos will help you pass the PE exam. And if you leave questions in the comments below, I will answer them in future videos. In fact, this video was created in response to a comment by one of our subscribers, Danielle, on a previous video. So to help you navigate the preparation of your PE exam application, specifically how to list your experience on the application, here are five tips. But before we dive in, please know that every state may review experience differently. And the following are general tips from my experience and my conversations with other engineers. Number one, provide details for each of your projects, specifically what you did on the project. This is the biggest mistake engineers make in applying for the PE exam. They give the name of the project, XYZ Highway Ramp Design, but then they use verbiage like, I worked on a team that redesigned the highway ramp. We provided design plans and specifications dealing with the roadway design. Many states won't accept this as your experience. Instead, you should write about specifically what you did. I worked on a team that redesigned an eight lane highway. My role was to design the details and specifications related to the roadway, including detailing the depth of aggregate beneath the roadway. I designed the curve length for both the on and off ramps. This is how specific you need to be. Otherwise, you may get denied. I've seen it happen many times. Number two, clearly define the amount of time you worked on a project and even the project subtasks if possible. Again, each state is different in exactly what they require, but in most states you will need to give the number of months that you worked on a project. This is not, and I repeat, not the total number of months that the project design and construction took. It is the exact amount of time that you worked on it. This is another piece of information that many people either get wrong or leave off of their applications. Doing so will likely hurt your chances of getting approved to sit. Number three, make sure that for every project you list on your application, you are able to provide a licensed engineer who supervised or worked with you on that project. If you cannot do this for a project, it will likely not be accepted. This is one of the reasons that the best way to track your experience as an engineer is to do so from day one of your career and not try to pull it all together when it's application time. One question that I get sometimes on this point is, what if I no longer work for that company? It doesn't matter. You still need to list that PE that supervised you and hopefully you have their contact information and have kept a good relationship with them. If not, you may have to exclude that project altogether. Although I would still list it on your application even if you don't count it towards your years of experience. Number four, in your project experience descriptions, be sure to outline the actual engineering tasks you had possibly citing the design work you did, maybe even some of the equations or methodologies used. The state boards typically want to feel comfortable that you have amassed the proper technical engineering experience. They don't care about project management experience. Lastly, number five, try to review a colleague's application who was previously approved to sit for the exam in your state or ask them to review yours upon completion. Why reinvent the wheel if you can see a sample of the type of descriptions that your specific state board previously approved. And this may actually be your first step to take, 
but I am listing it as last as a reminder to have your application reviewed before submission. So there you have it. Here's a quick recap. Number one, provide details for each of your projects, specifically what you did on the project. Number two, clearly define the amount of time you worked on a project. Number three, make sure that for every project you list on your application, you are able to provide a licensed engineer who supervised or worked with you on that project. Number four, in your project experience descriptions, be sure to outline the actual engineering tasks you had, possibly citing the design work you did, maybe even some of the equations or methodologies. And number five, try to have a colleague review your application before it's submitted or review someone else's who was previously approved. Lastly, in the description below, I will include a link to a helpful article on this topic from the National Society of Professional Engineers. I hope you found this week's video helpful. In an upcoming video, I will discuss the one biggest mistake you should never make during the PE exam. Past the PE exam videos will publish weekly so please be sure to click the subscribe button so you don't miss something that could make a substantial difference in your exam result. And please ask questions and leave comments below this video and I will respond to them. And let me know if there's a specific topic you'd like me to cover or a specific question that you need answered. Pass the PE exam, will have you covered. As I said earlier, this video was created in response to a previous comment. I'll see you next week on Pass the PE exam.